in the workshop, renovating an old boiler part four, making a new chimney and painting the mounting. What's with the magazine? Well, it's the December 2018 edition of Engineering and Miniature, and in this edition, I have written an article. And this first article in the magazine is about setting up your home workshop and buying a first lathe. If you find yourself thumbing through the magazine, I've got the centrefold part. But don't worry, there are no shots in the magazine of me wearing skimpy clothing, mainly shots of my workshop and bits and pieces. I was really pleased when the magazine arrived in the post because this is something I've always wanted to do. I learnt so much from the man called LBSC who used to write in Model Engineer and the reason that I started making these videos in the first place was to put some of this knowledge back and help others to get started in this fascinating hobby. On with the job. This is a piece of copper tubing which is far too long and needs cutting down and below it is the chimney mounting. This copper tube was the nearest I could get to the size of the hole in the mounting, but it needs turning down to fit. First of all, I'm facing across the end of the copper tube just to square it up. I'm using the larger of my two lathes for two reasons. One being that it has a very large four jaw self centering chuck, which holds the copper more securely, and the second reason is the piece of copper tubing can go down the centre of the spindle because this lathe is much bigger than my smaller Boxford lathe. As the magazine article is all about selecting a lathe to buy if you're a beginner, I think I missed one part of the article out, and that is, when buying a lathe, try and buy one that has a large hole in the spindle so you can get pieces of copper tubing and such like all the way through the chuck and into the spindle. Copper is not good stuff to machine, it's not very good to drill either, because it rags up and picks up and messes up very easily. But if both the speed and feed is correct, you will get a fairly good finish, but you do need some lubrication. I've left the piece of copper tubing turned slightly oversized, and now I'm using some emery cloth to reduce it slightly, so that it's a tight fit, but not too tight a fit in the main housing. In this clip, I'm using a file with a handle to remove the sharp edges and burrs from the outside diameter of the copper. One end done, time to do the other end. I've taken the copper tubing out of the chuck and I've turned it round. And in this clip I'm using a deburring tool for removing the burrs from the inside diameter of the copper tube. Blackgates Engineering sell these burring tools and they really are very good. For this next operation I'm using the smaller Boxford lathe. This is a piece of brass fitted in the chuck and I'm drilling a 10mm hole down the middle of it. Why 10mm? No particular reason, it was just close to hand at the time. It's really to start the hole off because this is a much larger drill going through now. I think this drill bit is about 1 inch in diameter. I'm making the chimney's brass top cap, so now I just need to make it so that this piece of brass fits tightly onto the copper tube and I don't have a drill or a reamer that's the size of this copper tube, so I'm boring it using a boring tool. This is not as substantial as the boring tool that I normally use in the larger of my two lathes, and I can't really take very heavy cuts because the tool bends and chatters. To speed up the process, once the boring tool's gone through the work from right to left, I bring it back from left to right and take a deeper cut. But when I'm going from right to left, the cut needs to be much finer, and the final cut will be from right to left. If I try and take too deep a cut when going from right to left, the tool tip digs in, and the tool bobs up and down and doesn't make a very good job of it. As with a lot of machining operations, it's a slow process, so patience is very useful. This is a final cut. I've been referencing it with the piece of tubing, and I don't want to screw it up now. And thankfully I didn't, it's just the right size. Before I push the piece of copper tubing into the brass fitting, I need to start shaping the bottom part of it. And to shape the underside of the chimney cap, I'm using a round nose tool. This particular round nose tool is designed to cut from left to right, but I use it the other way around. I just angle the tool post and it's better for the video because usually when I'm doing video close-ups of machine tool cutting, the tool post is often in the way. I think that's about right, I don't want the chimney cap to be too big. 
Now all I have to do is move the brass part to the back of the chuck and then press the tube into place using the tailstock. A very simple, quick and easy job. By rotating the handle on the tailstock, the piece of copper tubing is forced into the brass cap. After pushing the tube into the cap, I now need to machine the cap, and this is what I'm talking about with lathe sizes. The copper tube will not go through the hole in the chuck on the Boxford lathe, so it's over to my other lathe where it goes all the way through. Plus, this is a four-jaw self-centering chuck, as I mentioned earlier, and it's much better for holding things. All I have to do now is a little bit of freehand shaping. I'm using a round nose tool mounted like a boring tool. And in no time at all, the brass cap of the chimney looks about right. I don't really want it to look like a locomotive chimney. I just need it to be slightly ornate. So once I've turned it to the approximate shape, I pulled the tube further out from the chuck and used a piece of emery cloth as shown here. Then I polished the brass cap using my polishing spindle. This copper chimney is quite a snug fit in the mounting base. I tapped it into place using a soft hammer. It's time now to clean up the base and I'm using a Proxon motor tool with a wire brush on the end of it. And you definitely do need to wear eye protection when using these wire brushes. So the wire brush removes most of the rust and now I'm just giving it a once over with some Scotch-Brite followed by a wipe over with some panel wipe. And then it's into the outer part of the workshop to spray it. This part's going to get very hot when it's in service on the boiler casing, so I'm using heat resistant paint. And by the way, you don't need any primer for this, it is self priming. That's about it for this episode, I can't do anything else until the paint dries. So here is a clip of the paint drying, which is very similar to the ending of the last episode, but one or two viewers commented that my paint drying sequence in the previous episode was a bit short. But I'm not sitting here watching paint drying. I'm going into the house to make a cup of tea and read my article in the Engineering and Miniature magazine. And as always, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.